Hello, and welcome to Medieval Mondays with Riley Nolan voiceovers. With the Idaho Renaissance Fair only a few weeks away, I thought now would be the best time for us to have a little sit down. Everyone's excited for the turkey legs, archery, and mead, but there's one thing I'm looking forward to even more than mead. Oh no, you heard me right. More than mead. Knights in combat. So hold on to your quaff, because it's time for us to do a quick rundown on what a knight's armor looked like in the medieval period. If you'll turn your attention to this nifty little diagram, then we can begin. From the top down, you'll see we have the helmet or helm. The image produced when we usually think about a knight in full armor is the Great Helm. It was most popular from around 1100 to 1300 AD and provided excellent protection with its full coverage design. We'll move down to the Gordet, which has been traced to about 1300 AD and was worn as protection for the neck and throat. It was worn over a male coif and would sometimes cover part of the upper breastplate. As the centuries progressed, it was this piece of armor that was most likely to be decorated with designs and patterns. Pauldrons are next. These pieces of armor were made to cover the shoulder and upper arm, and also designed to attach the armor covering the rest of the knight's arms. Pauldrons were kept in place by buckles or leather straps that attached to the breastplate or the gorday. Much like the gorday, the pauldrons became more ornate towards the end of the medieval period. Spalders were additional arm protection that covered a warrior's upper arms and any shoulder left exposed by the pauldrons. Spalders were most commonly used by knights who would fight in hand-to-hand -hand combat and tournaments. Gussets were used to protect the vulnerable parts of a knight's armor, where mobility was necessary and would be hampered by plate armor, like the inner elbow, armpit, and groin. The most common materials used were leather and heavy canvas. Van braces were worn on a knight's forearm, and they were designed to fit tightly so they could not only provide protection from enemy blows, but help support the wearer's wrist, making the weight of the weapon and shield a bit easier to bear. To finish off the arms are gauntlets, armored gloves that would cover part of the van brace and all of the knight's hand. There are several types of gauntlets that we will cover in a future episode, but for now, we can all picture the popular finger gauntlets that look like a glove with individual plates covering each finger. To protect the torso, a knight would wear a breast and back plate. These were the largest pieces of plate armor that a knight would have. Breast plates in the early medieval period were flat and lacked decoration, but much like the rest of the armor, time found the design change to fit more tightly against the chest and abdomen and to showcase ornamental patterns. There are a few different types of breastplates, so we'll do a deeper dive in a later episode. The leg armor of a knight consisted of tassets, which were designed to hang from the lower edge of the breastplate and helped protect the upper legs of its wearers. The knee cups, which were attached to the leg and other armor parts by laces, buckles, or cords, the greaves, which protected the lower leg of a knight from knee to ankle and fitted under the knight's sabatons. These were a knight's foot protection, made of iron or steel like the rest of a knight's armor, and they varied greatly in style. The last piece of armor we're going to cover today is the gambeson, which was a padded jacket worn as protection. Similar to a chainmail shirt, it could be worn alone or as the base layer for a full suit of armor. Not only did it provide additional protection against slashing and piercing weapons, but it also gave the warrior a buffer from the weight and hard edges of their plate armor. I have been Riley Nolan, and thank you for listening to this week's episode of Medieval Mondays.